now after hours with Nancy James and here's Nancy. Thank you, Steve. Welcome to After Hours with Nancy Jennings. I'm here tonight with Kay. They're just getting ready to set up to mm -hmm. sing. <laughs> the well, one guy you, looks familiar from last week. That's Ed Zimmerman <laughs> from Mavis, and now he plays the bass in Kay. Hello. All right, How is so everybody tonight? Yeah. Glad to see y'all. <laughs> Wake them up. Up. Wake them up. Okay, so what I want to do is just um, have you guys introduce yourselves, what you play, who you are, and then we're going to go right into three songs, okay? Then I'll come back and I'll do the interview. The name of the band is Keg, so uh, we'll start with... Uh, Keg stands for Kevin, Eddie, and Greg, so we might as well start with Kevin on drums. Kevin who? Kevin Snyder. <laughs> uh, drums and uh, vocals. All right. Eddie Zimmerman, bass and vocals. Greg Allen Holland, singing and on guitar. All right, so we're going to hear three songs from Keg, then we'll go into the interview. What's your first song? Uh, the first song we're going to do is a song I wrote called The Womb of Eternity. It's actually off of an album that I wrote uh, for a project called Moonlight Tide. And it's on the first album, Ancient Mystery. And uh, we kind of redid it in a more, uh, let's say, guitar-oriented way. I originally wrote it on the keyboards. And then, um, as you see, I'm playing drums here. so And guitar, so we did it more of a uh, guitar version for you guys. You need a keyboard? <laughs> <laughs> All right, take it away, guys. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,
few minutes to make some adjustments. You can turn this speaker up back here. With the vocals for Kevin. Kevin was pretty loud. Eddie's going to play one now called Plans Gone Bad.
Whoa. Whoa. It's a chance to get tuned up a little bit. Maybe we could talk right now. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so this is Keg. Um, and this is interview time, so we're gonna take a little bit of a break from playing so we can um, ask them some questions. So first of all, how did you guys meet each other and how did you get together to form your band? That's a tough question already. Um, <laughs> um, I know, it's not like you work at the same um, place I or anything. I met Kevin, um, I was playing a show and, um, with a band and then I met Kevin and him and I started jamming. Eddie and I work at Martin Guitar and met Eddie at Martin Guitar. And um, basically, Kevin and I had this band going, but we didn't have a bass player, and this guy wanted us to play a show. Eddie said, I'll play the show. We said, thanks, Eddie. And uh, it all started from there. He didn't even really practice for that show, and he did a great job. So thanks, Eddie. And here we are three years later. <laughs> three years have been together? Yep, three years. We've been writing songs and having a great time. All right. Now, um, as you grew up, were you always into music and playing instruments, or did you do it uh, when you were older? Well, I started uh, when I was in grade school, much like the guy you just had up here. Um, I did the whole marching band, concert band, jazz band. Um, and I even took some music theory to get out of math classes <laughs> in high school, <laughs> which was well worth it. Well, you know, music is supposed to help you in math. Did you know that? Yes, it is, definitely. I didn't realize that until after I stopped taking math classes. I know, I know it helped me. I went to an art school um, for college, so I really didn't need a lot of math. And Ed? I've, I've been playing since I was a child. Also started on trumpet, drums, and then guitar. And I've been going since... I was 11 playing guitar, so <laughs> having a great time. And Greg. I have been playing since I'm a little kid, too. My grandfather and my uncle were in bands. I would watch them play. I'd always grab the guitar from my uncle, so he gave me a guitar. And then I was little, and I tried to play on it, and I actually I broke the guitar. Because <laughs> I was just being funny with it and using it as a toy. And then I got a, a real guitar when I got older, and that was it. Been playing since I'm a kid. Too. Now, did you take lessons? For a little bit, and then I quit. And then years later, I took some from my buddy, and he sort of showed me some things I still didn't know. And he was like, "You're okay to go." And you quit taking lessons, or you quit guitar? No, I just quit taking lessons. I didn't. I didn't like the first teacher I had, and I don't know. You know, I was a. I was a kid. I was rebellious. And all that. Really? Not As yet. a kid, you were rebellious. Yes, I was. I was very really rebellious. And what do you consider yourself now? Still rebellious. <laughs> I met him at Mark Guitar on one of the tours, so <laughs> he ran outside during work to get me CDs and um, business cards. <laughs> so I can't it was right. awesome. so I, if I, I got to get out of work, I got to get out of work. You know? How do you get off the line without getting fired, man, you know? <laughs> Don't tell anybody. Just He's got it that gotta way. Go for it. <laughs> Chris is very understanding. Oh, okay, I get it. Greg's got it that way. He's been there forever. Oh. Now, have uh, um, Kevin and Ed, do you have any family members that were into music like Greg or? Not me, no. I was the only one. Me really? either. Well, my uncle, uh, he was a guitarist back in the day in the 50s. His name was Joe Roma, put out some albums in Philadelphia. But other than that, uh, he was the only other family member that ever played anything. All right, so we're going to um, get into more music. So let's do four songs this time. Then we're going to come back and do the promotions, any gigs or anything out for sale or anything. Sounds good. Okay? We definitely like to get those in. That's All right. And just good. make sure you introduce your songs and let us know whether they're your originals or Ocean not. Covers. Uh, Eddie, you want to start it off? You can pick whatever you like to do here and we'll do it. Oh, you want to start off with Long Train Runner? Sure. Sounds good. This is a cover song by the Doobies.
two tickets to paradise.
next song we're going to do here is an old Rush song. If anyone remembers this one, this was on the Fly by Night record. And Kevin's going to sing this one here. I thought Jethro told me the person. It's Ian Anderson. <laughs> Which one's Pen? <laughs> Which one's what? Pen. <laughs> Which one's Keg? <laughs> Keg. That's Eddie. He'll let you know right away. Yeah, he if you don't say Keg, Keg, he'll knock your teeth out. Keg! <laughs> hey, see what I mean? Hey, is he? Hey, he? Hey, is he? Hey, I'm big Keg. I had a good time with Keg. <laughs> Really good freaking guy. They played all kinds of music. Okay, shut up. Yeah. Thank you. 
on bumpers I've seen. I haven't seen that many on a drum kit. I actually bought Do you this. collect them or? I, I didn't put most of these on to be honest with you. Uh, some guy needed money for drugs and I needed another drum set because this isn't really my this isn't really my main kit. It's more my travel. True kit. story really? Yeah. Like I could do. <laughs> I paid a hundred bucks for it um, and I replaced all the heads. Now this snare is worth more than the whole kit. This, this snare is a uh, it's a custom Ludwig. I don't remember what year. Some year, I don't know. Is that it cost me about. Cake? What's that? Is that on top of a cake? <laughs> top of a cake. Top of a cake. He, oh. he, he can't get over the cake part. Mm -hmm. He's still on the cake thing. No, no, that's cool. You know, this cost me two hundred dollars. The stairs two hundred dollars. The whole cake was a hundred. And then I replaced the heads, and I got it sound pretty good. Yeah. It's you cheap wood, but it, it's good. The last time I saw that many stickers. Bumper stickers was on an old Pinto. That's what held it together. <laughs> yeah, as soon as you said Pinto, I knew you we were. Like, <laughs> I truly feel that the stickers make the kids sound better. Really? How? I don't know. <laughs> I tell myself that before I go to sleep. All right. Well, since we're on the subject of instruments, what you playing, Ed? I'm playing my Getty Lee Bender Jazz Bass. Oh, it's not a bagpipe. <laughs> Shut up, Steve. This is my back place in my back pocket. <laughs> Alrighty then. Um, we'll teach you to mess with cats. <laughs> 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 He's dying. Go on with what you're playing. Go ahead. I'm sorry. And and then uh, Greg. This is a 2000 replica of a 57 Les Paul gold top. Oh, nice and I love it. Chevy. No, it's not a 57 Chevy. <laughs> I, I got to meet Les Paul's Les Paul that he played and signed for Stephen Massa Friday night. Nice. Wish that could have been. And you get to touch it I, I got because to meet, Dave had his I hands all over I got to meet Les over. Paul at the Iridium. <laughs> what? I got to meet the Les Paul at the Iridium Club in New York. Really? Yes, I did. Well, that's pretty cool. <laughs> yeah, that's. All right. I met Larry. I, I got I got this bass. Uh, my my ex bass player, my old bass player from band no, called AKA. <laughs> no, I played in a band called AKA for about twelve years, and my bass player passed away, and uh, this was his bass. So I'm carrying on this legacy. Now you're in two bands. Where do you find the time to work full time and then practice with both bands? Well. It's thin, but it happens. <laughs> and speaking of having that support behind you, you guys have families, married, children? I'm married. I have a beautiful wife named Sue. She works at Martin with us. Oh, yes? Yes. I have a daughter, Johanna, and a wife, Laura. That's it. And I'm still a rebel. <laughs> so that means single. I, I, would make all, I would tell you all my children and my grandchildren, but... Hey, I love you all. We don't have enough time. <laughs> yeah, I've, I've got a bunch. <laughs> okay, Is that why you saw your name Xerox? <laughs> yes, that's it. Oh my God, I gotta shut up. Just keep going. Yeah. And I'm learn around Xerox. Z I'm around yes. Zeno too much. <laughs> what about your inspirations? The kind of uh, music that you play. Who inspired you with your music? 
just music and I like it all almost uh, you know just everything you could think of from Led Zeppelin to Segovia to you know anything really <laughs> Anybody have Aerosmith in there, please? When I first started playing, I my first time with Smith. <laughs> I, I did, I actually listened to Aerosmith a lot when I first started playing. And in fact, and I, I might show my age, but when the Pump album came out, was around when I started playing drums. And you could actually, the way uh, Steven Tyler sings, because he used to be a drummer, it's very rhythmic too. So it was kind of easy to play to. So I'd set up bar stools around myself and play the Pump album all the time. And then when I went to college, and I got into Rush, and so I would set chairs up and I would sit there and try to play like Neil Peart. Then I went after college, uh, then I got into fusion jazz and prog rock and all that other happy stuff, so. You got a drum set full of stickers. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> so everybody thought it was a pinto, that was really a cake. <laughs> we'll do anything to sneak out the hall into the bar, Steve. Mm -hmm. All right, Ed, any inspirational people that Todd Rundgren, Elvis Costello, Steely Dan. Do you get to meet any of them at Mark when they come in for the guitars? Do you get to meet them? Because I see. I haven't personally met any of those people at Martin. I met Todd Rundgren once, which was a, a real thing for me. Yeah. But we actually uh, we had Mike Portnoy sit at one of our shows. Yeah. Mike Portnoy was at our show at the. Uh, Sam Steel Stats. Steel Stats. Yeah. Oh, cool. So that yeah. was cool. That that's his man there. <laughs> <laughs> well, I'm trying to get next to none on here, so that's, that's Max. Nice. He's, a, he's a hell of a drummer too. Yeah, Max. yeah. I saw him at the Roxy um, with Victim and Downing Thomas and those guys when they had the originals down there. In fact, Max looks like Mike Portney used to look when he was like seven. When he was younger. So yeah. Look exactly like. Yeah. Yeah. He's really good. But I knew Mike when he wrote that. Like, <laughs> I, I, met him at, I met Mike Portnoy at uh, Berkeley Music College. Yeah. My old drummer went to Berkeley, and he actually recorded the Majesty album, which was Dream Theater's previous, their original album. Yeah. All right, so now it's time to promote yourselves as a band. Um, mm. How about gigs and any dates for gigs? We have a show already this Thursday, two days from now. January 12th from 5.30 to 7.30 at Staley's in Nazareth, not the Staley's in Allentown. It's right next to the Jacksonian Club. Staley's Bakery. And it's Staley's oh, Bakery. Yep, yeah, look, at everyone's been there. You can yeah. see that already. It's great there. Everything's homemade. Awesome. And, uh, we played yeah. some good shows there. And it we, smells good in there, too. The one after that we have is at Grumpy's Roadhouse Barbecue, and that is February 11th. Which is a Saturday night, and that is from 9:30 to 12:30. And we have the Spring Thaw event. We have a bunch of shows coming up. Some of them are booked for the year, like Grumpy's were booked there for the year. Staley's were booked for the year. But Spring Thaw is May 6th. That's a Saturday at Triborough. We will be there as well. That'll be a big event with lots of bands. Scott Marsh will be there, I think, so far. And uh, Social Call, and also Crazy Heart, and us. Very so, good. And it's a benefit as well, and I'm not sure what that's for. I just got the info on that. When is it? May 6th. That's a Saturday. That's four bands. And it's a benefit for something that's a good cause. And, uh, okay, so now if everybody forgets what you just said, where can they find it? you have a Facebook page or actually, website? We, we do. So you can find us under Kevin Eddie Gregg on Facebook. Just type in Kevin Eddie Gregg, and we'll pump right up. We wanted, we wanted to have Keg, but they wouldn't let us, so we have it as Kevin, Eddie, Greg. Why wouldn't they let you do Keg? They're Nazis. Yeah. <laughs> Facebook Nazis. <laughs> <laughs> Said it was too generic. They didn't have to play Russian. Wrong idea. <laughs> <laughs> now, it's alright, it's probably going to be hacked by Russia. Have you seen anything out yet on your original stuff? Um, Chris, yeah. you have a demo. We have a demo with three originals and three covers mm -hmm. uh, by each of us. We each wrote a song for that album. Well, not for the demo, but we had a song that we contributed to the demo. Now, do you each have your own CD out? What are your originals? Uh, Greg has a bunch of CDs out of his originals. I have a bunch of CDs of mine. Eddie's working on one, I think. Yeah, at this moment. I'm working on mine. <laughs> now, where can anybody get these CDs? Uh, you can find mine under Moonlight Tide. I have like three albums that I did produce, wrote, and 
and played on. Um, and Greg's under Greg Allen Holland. Yes, I have a website. Go to gregallenholland.com and you can pick up my music on all kinds of stuff. I have videos too on YouTube and SoundCloud and all kinds of good stuff like that. Just if you put my name into the computer, all kinds of stuff will come up. All kinds of stuff? All kinds of music. And stuff. All kinds of stuff, yeah. You know, police, yeah, police reports. I'm a rebel, remember? So yeah, when I was in jail, whatever. Yeah. I noticed you had the hair thing. Um, do you ever do you do the hair thing? I've been told to do the hair thing. I learned the hair thing. I do the hair from thing. But, yeah, but Eddie is the pro of the, of the hair thing. But it's not long. He's now. older than me. It was. It was. <laughs> I was catching up there. I, I, I have to say, Matt Smith Redsey has the most awesome hair. He's the hair god right now. So catch up. We're, we're working on that, though. So watch out. All right. So let's do. I don't know how much time do we have left. You want to do three more songs? Sure. Sounds good. We'll even do a pretty one for you now. This is one that is on one of my solo records called High on the Mountain. All right. Take it away.
Yes, thank you. I was called high and I'm out. All right. Okay, this is an original that Eddie's got here. This one's called Push. for coming out. Thank you guys are great. I just have one more question. Um, do you have, you guys said you've been together for three years, you've been doing gigs and stuff together. Do you have any memorable moments from any gigs, anything weird or crazy or fun happen? <laughs> Lots of people Between passing you out. Between or the other people? <laughs> well, we've had uh, women fall into uh, equipment. 
fall into oh, yeah, yeah drunk, uh, drunk women falling into equipment we've had. Yeah, that's it. But we don't mind that. We just take them back up. <laughs> Get back out there again. <laughs> but they actually We'd rather them. have them there yeah, than yeah, but don't you, yeah, but don't you worry about your equipment getting damaged because somebody drunk is falling into it? I mean, that's what... It's all part of the game. We're rock and roll. <laughs> The closer that they get They're to the stage, the more we like Because it. some people are really picky about their equipment and, and you know, not being touched by the uh, audience. <laughs> well, she didn't mean to touch it. She just got too drunk. <laughs> she was trying to dance, but that didn't work out for her too well. <laughs> Lots of funny moments when we're, you know. We, we had a great male dancer here Friday night. Oh, um, my God. <laughs> did you see he was video? awesome. <laughs> <laughs> he was unbelievable. He had the scarf going, the fringes, he was rocking out. It's all or nothing, right? Oh, he, yeah, well, look what I said, you know, when they dance for you, I guess that's the best compliment, right? When you see them dancing while you're playing, is that how you look at it? Yeah, you know, it's a good time, you know, rather than sitting there like a bump on a log. Let's go, right? Yeah. You're out, you're alive. You never know, here today, gone tomorrow. Yeah, that's what I keep trying to tell myself. <laughs> Live it up. When you get a second chance, you don't waste it. Well, I got a second chance yep. two years ago. I'm trying not to waste it. Yeah, well, you're doing a good job. <laughs> hey, we'd like to thank you guys, too. Thanks for having us. Have us oh, for your yeah, events. Thank you very much. Thank you. We are KEG, which stands for Kevin, Eddie, and Greg. Right, Steve? Uh, yeah. <laughs> and, and let them know where they can find you again on Facebook Just and type websites. Kevin, Kevin and Greg. Kevin Greg. Right in that little search button on the top of Facebook. Just type that in and it will pop right up. Say hello. Kevin Eddie Greg is Ken. I, I, I owe you guys something, by the way. Excuse me, this is serious. You guys played for us for Boo Fest last year. Yes, yes, we sure. love it. We want to do it again. Yeah, you're going to. And uh, it was a wonderful thing. They were the opening act for Boo Fest. The Lehigh Valley Business Group did that. And on behalf of them, I want to thank you guys for doing that. We had ourselves a very interesting day that day because of the weather and some other things that happened. But you guys really kicked the show off great. And people are still talking about it, to be honest with you. Great. They said, you know, they said, do you see that group? I said, it's Kenny. And he says, really like what you guys did. Thanks, so, Steve. Yes, we did. We had a great we time. Had a great time. Thank you again Thank you, Steve, for coming out. Yeah. Two Thank weeks you. in a row, Ed. Thank you very yep. much. <laughs> <laughs> I had a ball. Thank you very much for having us here at the Jet Port. All right. This is After Hours with Nancy Jennings. I'm just going to say good night. Next week I have Copperfield on. If you want to know who they are, tune in or come to the Jet Port. Sounds good. And I've gotten, actually what we need to do, we need to jump to it. <laughs> Kid! <laughs> Thanks, Nancy. When are you going to play Lunatic Fringe for me, Steve? She was like, figure out where to get the thing from. <laughs> what happened to have it at home on MP3, would you? Anyway, this is Steve Christopher here, along with Nancy Jennings, Earl Andrews, Beth Helen, and the entire Rock of the Valley gang, Alexis Steele. Superman. Okay. Nick. <laughs> I got that right, didn't I? Yes, man. You're right. Oh, okay. And, uh, and Peachy. And Phyllis. And everyone named Bill. Okay. Jen, our bartender. Yay! We have some great time today. Rock in the Valley here, meet the bands. All right, Chad. All right, rock on. Steel Notes and After Hours. We have ourselves another great time here. Tune in next week here where you'll hear us say hi. Okay, this is Rock in the Valley here. Say goodnight to us. Drive safe going on. Thanks for listening.